Hello, and welcome to Linux Device Drivers, an introduction to programming at the kernel level. I'm Doug Abbott, and I'll be your instructor for this class. Here's a brief description of some of the things we'll be covering in the class. First of all, we'll learn that much of a device driver involves interacting with the kernel. There are a number of programming exercises in the class that run on a Linux workstation. These have been built and tested under kernel version 3.10, which is the basis of the CentOS 7 distribution. So that is the recommended distribution, although others will probably work. I say probably because kernel APIs can and do change over time, and you may encounter a situation where an exercise won't build under a different kernel version. Device drivers are generally implemented as what are known as kernel loadable modules. So that is one of the first things we'll take a look at. Uh, and then we'll consider the various device types that the kernel defines and supports and the properties of those device types. We'll look at the unique problems of debugging kernel-level code. Now, this is not a beginning course. You need to be fairly proficient at C programming and um, have experience using Linux at the application level. Know the basic shell commands. You'll need root privilege in order to run the exercises. If your system is managed by a company IT department, ask your sysadmin for a sudo account. That's spelled S-U-D-O. And just for the record, Linux is a registered trademark of Linus Torvalds, the creator of the Linux kernel. Here's a more detailed look at what we'll be covering in the class. We'll begin with an introduction that asks the question, well, what the heck is a device driver anyway, and why do we care? Then, um, since kernel modules are the basis for implementing most drivers, we'll have a look at what those are all about. And then that will lead to the characteristics of a basic character driver. Um, and with that, under our belt, we will take a look at the problems that uh, come up when we're trying to debug kernel code. Next, we'll move on to blocking I.O. That is, what happens if data tr can't be transferred when you request it? Uh, then we'll see how drivers access real hardware. That'll be followed by a related lesson that deals with interrupt handling. Uh, then we'll take a look at the Linux device driver model. We'll uh, see how the kernel manages time, and we'll look at the various synchronization mechanisms that help us deal with concurrency issues. Then we'll uh, examine how the kernel manages memory. We'll move on to the next class of drivers, for block devices. Block devices are mass storage. Then we'll look at PCI drivers to get some insight into how the kernel handles plug-and-play issues. Next, we'll consider drivers for network devices. USB drivers take the notion of plug-and-play much further than PCI, and that's what makes them interesting. We will consider how we integrate our own device driver in with the Linux kernel source tree. And finally, we'll take a look at the notion of device trees. So there are a number of programming exercises in the class. The only way to learn programming is to do it. And with that in mind, there are some simple prerequisites you'll need a PC running a fairly recent distribution of Linux, like CentOS 7. The lab setup guide provides the details. Okay then, let's get started. 